Hello and welcome to the fifth video in this series on Python natural language processing with NLTK. In this video we're going to take a look at WordNet. WordNet is a pretty sophisticated dictionary like tool we can use to form associations with words, look up definitions, and a few other important things. It's going to be a great tool in our tool set in order to take on natural language processing projects and programs we're interested in. So let's go ahead and get right into it. First we can import the module WordNet and we can do that by import nltk.corpus I'm sorry we want to do from from nltk.corpus imports wordnet as wn. And that's pretty conventional. You, you will see a lot of other programmers importing the same way and using wn to stand for wordnet. Okay, so not only can we use wordnet to look up words and as a thesaurus, but we also get a little bit deeper level of knowledge of words. WordNet is good because it associates words with other ones. And with these associations, we can start to understand context because we take for granted when we communicate, there's implied meanings within words. But if you were to take that word out of the sentence and look at it at face value, you might miss the meaning behind that word in that situation. So let's go ahead and start with an example. So we can get used to WordNet and see what it has to offer. So first we'll look up a word. Um, let's look up Met oops. Look up meditation, and I'll preference it with WN meditation, so I know what it is. And the syntax will be WN dot sin sets with an S, and we pass in the literal word. that. Good, I spelled it right. So let's see what this is. So wn.sinsets with an s returns a list of sin sets, a singular sin set. Now notice with within this sin set we get the word we pass through the literal and we get the part of speech which is noun in this case and we get which one it is which is zero one because we can have other cases of meditation for example here it's also a noun and it's the second in this sin sets Okay, great. Now this is a very simple example, but it's a good one to start out with. So what can we do with this? We found that there were two examples of meditation. They're both nouns. And let's get a little bit of information. Well, we can look up the definitions and see what distinguishes the two uses of this word. So to do this, we'll go with, uh, I'll say, um, I'll go meditation O one equals WN dot sin set and we're gonna want to pass the literal with the part of speech and the number associated with it.
So one thing to get used to is that the word you're interested in, you want to start with getting the sin sets because we have to determine what usage of the word we're going to actually want to be looking and diving into. And once we find that, we can find more information about that word within its sin set. And we will pass it the part of speech right here, which is noun. And of course, there's verb, adjective, and so on. And the number that WordNet associates with it. Okay. So let's see what meditation 01 is. It just returns it back. Okay, so that's good syntax and everything that checks out. So let's use the method definition. It pops up there. So continuous and profound contemplation or musing on a subject or a series of subjects of a deep or ab abstruse nature. Okay. Now let's see here the second usage. So I'll just recall the line we used previously, name this O2, O2, which is the second entry in the sin sets. Okay, great. And I'll do the same call. Def definition uh, so context it's it's giving us an indication that it's a of a spiritual or theological or religious perspective contemplation of spiritual matters usually of religious or philosophical subjects so the first usage is more of meditation on abstract concepts so things we don't maybe consider when we're doing manual tasks, when we're just focused on those things, these are abstractions. And then the second is in the context of religion or theology or philosophy. So this is a good indication of where WordNet goes above and beyond just a simple definition. And just for this introduction, we'll, we'll leave it here. And in the next video, we'll look at some more examples that have different parts of speech. And we'll look at some other key methods that we can use to help us determine word usage, context, and, um, and help us better understand natural language processing and what we can do with it. So thank you for watching this video, and I hope you have a great day.